What's up everybody? Today I'm going to review The Walking Dead Season 3, Episode 3, titled Walk With Me. I will go in depth with this review, so I hope you guys enjoy. Now, when this episode first starts out, we see a helicopter crash. Now, it's revealed to us that that helicopter was a military uh, helicopter. And it had military soldiers in it. And now, we see Andrew and Michonne go to the crash site where the helicopter crashed at. We also see the governor. So this right here makes me think that with well, this helicopter crash that was very close to Woodbury, for the governor to um see this and for them to come to this um to come to the site. Also, uh, there's two there's two um people that we get to see um in the hill up well one of them didn't make it now. The black guy name is Sean. He's um African American, and we can tell that the impeller from the um or the blades from the helicopter um cuts off cuts his body in half because we see his intestines everywhere on the ground, and we see that he's dying, but he hasn't turned yet. We also see a guy in the helicopter, and his name is Lieutenant Lieutenant Wells. He's a lieutenant, and um it's also revealed that he um was working with the National Guard unit. Now we see Michonne go um and, and look and see what happened and we see how Andrea and got sick because now she's throwing up. In the first episode, um season three, we didn't see her throwing up. We just knew she had a very bad fever, but now her sickness and got worse. And we see like I go back to what I was saying. We see Michonne and she looks at um Sean just laying there dying. We can see the blood on the helicopter blade or the impeller. We can see the blood and we can see how it chopped his body in half. Like I said, the dude is suffering. He's dying. And we see the governor and his men come. And we see um the governor. We see Martinez. Now Martinez is the is the um Hispanic guy. He's the um guy with the cap on, the one who who, who had the baseball bat. And we see Tim. Now Tim is the Asian kid. I'm I'm, I'm assuming that he's young, very young. And we also see Bowman. Now Bowman is the black African American with the um tall um nappy fro. Kind of, I don't know if it's nappy. I can't know. It's kind of nappy. And he's ha and he have a boy narrow. Now that's the reason they call him Bowman because Jesus man, you seen this dude? His pullback power is so amazing because when he used that bow, he was able to kill a walker. And like the bow and arrow went through the walk ahead and, and, and into it, and it went and, and it had hit a tree. Now, how many people do you catch in the Walking Dead TV series using the bow and arrow and it goes through the walk ahead, like completely goes through it? Because when Daryl shoots a bow and arrow, it just goes in the walk ahead and stay there, and then he have to pull it out. But this guy, bow and arrow, went through the walk ahead and went into a tree. That's some mean um pullback power he have. And also not to mention also to mention that his um rope on his well his um string on his bow is very tight. And he also have perfect aim. He don't need a scope. Dara have a scope on, on, on his crossbow. That's why that's the reason why he's able to get decent kill because the scope on his crossbow. But this guy is all natural. Jesus. And we see the governor kill Shun. Because of course Shun has turned already. Like I say, his body got decapitated. And we see him, we see him stab him in the head and twist a knife in there to ensure that he kills him and damage the brain. And then we see him find um, Lieutenant Wills in the helicopter. Now, Andrea realized because she think this guy is helping him at first. She, because she, she think this guy is helping him, but and so, so she's ready to be. So she stated that, oh, he's helping him. We can probably get some help from him. So she was ready to go where he was, and Michonne stopped, stopped her from going. Because and, cause then they realized he killed them. The um the, um Sean, of course. And then we see Michonne Pitts acting up. Cause like like I said, I said this in my previous discussion. She had to decapitate those those um those walkers. She had to. And let me say this. The name of those walkers, a lot of people say can't seem to remember the names. The name of those walkers was Mike and Terry. Like I said before, Mike was her boyfriend and Terry was her best friend. Those those um are the name of those two walkers. And now we see her decapitate them because these walkers start to make noise. 
And like I say, if the governor and his men find these walkers, they're going to be suspicious because you have walkers with um, decapitated arms, no bottom jaws, and also they chained up to a tree with backpacks on. That's another reason she had to decapitate them. But she didn't kill them because a lot of people see me she killed them. Now, killing, killing them is when you stab them in the brain, of course. So she didn't kill them. She just decapitated and shut them up. And we see Michonne use her katana blade. And we can see how the katana blade, because we all know a, a sharp and a very good blade can ha has, has a reflection on it. So she's able to see Merle behind her. And Merle basically tells her, uh, 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 you got to stop, stop that right now because he has a gun. Now, here's the thing. The governor was going to leave him. This man was going to leave because he didn't find it. But yet, Merle found them. I'm going to tell you why Merle found them. Because Merle is a great hunter. Matter of fact, Merle is, a, is an excellent hunter. That's where Daryl gets it from. Because remember when Shane killed Randall in Walking Dead Season 2? That's how Daryl was able to find out Shane killed him. Because Daryl gets that hunting instinct from Merle. Merle is a hunter, for some of you who didn't know. That's the reason why he was able to find them. Hunt, hunting them was like hunting deer. You know what I'm saying? So that's how he was able to find Michonne and Andrea. And we can see how Andrea's sickness has got really bad. And it's like she's on the verge of dying because she faints. She literally faints and passes out. And we see them going back to Woodbury. Now, by the time they, they were getting back to Woodbury, it's nighttime. And we see zombies hanging up on trees and shit. Now that's that's kind of creeping. That's that's kind of that's real creepy to see zombies hanging up on trees. Now it's unknown who put that zombie on that tree like that, but hey, who cares? So we get the wood bear, and we see Doctor Steven talking to uh, Andrea, telling her you need to stay here. And she and Andrea asks her, "Where are we?" And she was like, "I can't tell you that." So that's how you know these people really feel the governor. And um and we see Merle coming up. Now, his thing people. Merle was asking questions that wasn't contained to what the governor told him to ask. That's the reason why Milton stated, Are you really gonna leave Merle with them girls unsupervised? Questioning them, Merle asked them questions way beyond what the governor told him to. He asked him about uh, what happened to the rest of the group members. He referred to Rick as a prick for leaving him handcuffed on the roof. He showed Andrea his arm and stuff and how, he, how he's gone. And um, Andrea also tells him that Daryl is a valuable asset or uh, asset. Oh, I can't say it right. To the group now. And they actually like Daryl. They like Daryl. He worked like because they got lost. And Merle asks, is Daryl still alive? And she says she doesn't know. And Daryl and Merle states that Daryl was always the sweet one out of them two. Because Merle was always the asshole, the racist, the racist prick. And just a lot of things in general. And Daryl was always the good guy. And and also, Daryl did not have Merle beliefs. What Merle believed in. And we can and, and we also hear how Andrea tells him about how, how everybody had died. Now she says everybody who did, right? But she did not mention Shane. Remember, Andrea do not know Shane's dead because in the season two finale, um Rick never got to, never got to tell her because the walkers, the hurry the walkers had basically took over the phone so they had to escape. They had no time to talk. But she do not know Shane is dead. She mentioned everybody was dead except Shane. She told everybody exactly who, who, who was all dead. And she also mentioned her sister, Amy. And that's how we know Merle have some remorse now. Or I think he been had it, but we never got to find that because he was always on drugs in season one of The Walking Dead. He was on drugs when he had that fight with T-Dog. And I'm surprised I didn't hear no racial slurs coming from him in terms of Michonne. And he states to Andrea that I'm sorry she was a sweet girl. Talking about Amy, and he and he refers to Michonne as a mute, meaning that she doesn't talk. I I expected to hear the word nigger or something like that, but he didn't say it, and that surprised me that he he wasn't saying any racial, um, racist words towards her. It's really surprising to me. And now, 
we see that also, let me state this too. She did mention a form to him. You know, Merle did mention that he was on the verge of killing himself, contemplating suicide. Because he said he bled out to death and he was hungry after he escaped, after he left Atlanta. And he was, um, he was, the only way he was thinking was eating a bullet. He was thinking about eating a bullet, basically, you know, killing himself, committing suicide. And he said he hoped to see Daryl on the other side, meaning the afterlife. That's the um that's the reason that then when he asked her about it, Daryl still alive. But he did contemplate suicide. And Daryl said this. Now, remember, Daryl said the only person that can kill Merle is Merle. That's evidence. Because he cause he um did say that the governor the governor did find him um on his verge of death that he was gonna kill himself. Now we see them leave out the room and we see Andrea and Michonne confront him about killing that um man that was basically already dead telling him about oh you 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 killed the man that was already dead and the governor basically refers to him refers to him as a walker of course he but he say he came back to life and so Michonne say he wasn't bit so how he came basically how he came back to life now here's the thing because Andrea asked the same thing here's the thing I remember in the season two finale I just explained this Andrea was not around the group when Rick told on um, the group that everybody is sick and everybody has to um um basically ca ca um carries the disease or the infection. So remember that Andrea didn't know this because she was not around Rick at that time. They all had got separated. Now we see them go outside. And let me say this, Merle. Like I say, I, I told you about Merle hunting skills because Merle lost his right arm, and that was his good arm. But Merle was able to shoot. To, he was he was able to shoot three walkers and get a solid headshot on them, like a solid, like a not not a solid, but like a decent headshot on them, like right there in their head with just his left hand. That's why that's that's, that's why I'm telling you, Merle. Even though he's missing that right arm. Merle is still nothing to play with. Because, <laughs> like I say, his hunting skills are above average. He's uh, excellent. Next. We see the next day that uh, we hear about the population of Woodbury. They say it's 73 people. Now, a lot of you thinking, oh, 73 people. Man, that's a threat. Now, you, have, you have to look at it this way. 73 people. Not all those 73 people are threats. We seen one girl that was pregnant, and the woman stated that once she have the once she have a baby, that'll make it seventy four people. So, not all of them are threats, but they are um, believing what the governor is saying, A.K.A. Philip, because we all know he got a twit, um, a, a twisted dark side. Now, and this and, and this will capture my eye. We see the governor talk, talking to um. Uh, Lieutenant, uh, what's his? I forgot his name. Lieutenant, Lieutenant Wells. We see him talking to Lieutenant Wells, basically tricking him, trying to find out where the rest of the um, where the rest of his group at, because Lieutenant Wells stated that where he was at on post, meaning post army base, meaning that he stated that they was good. They had shelter. They had everything. They had food. They had supplies. But he, he gave us a backstory. He said that. He said that one of the guys, somehow one of the guys got bitten within that group. And so he went he went into a, he he went crazy. And he also stated that the people found out he got bitten. And one of the guys ran out the gate and left the gate open. And it caused walks to come in and barricade. And take and, and like take over everything. And he said within a couple of hours, everybody was almost turned. Everybody was bitten, almost dead. And so he said they escaped in the helicopter. And that's when they had that crash. But he tells them about another group. About his group that was supposedly he told them because this group was located on the highway. They was in the highway. Um, that's where, that's where the governor found them at in the high on the highway. And he tells him about it. the governor said, I promise you I'll bring her back, which was a lie. That was a fucking lie. And this is another thing that caught my eye. We see Governor and Milton talking in the lab. 
Now we know the Milton, you no know Milton and um Merle is gonna have some conflict. Because Mer um I think the governor asked him about some what, what about you got you, you done with that homework I gave you? And Milton refers to um to the governor saying I, I did but the dog ate it all. And he referred to um Merle and Merle said, What you say? And he tries to attack. Well he didn't try to attack him, but he tries to come get to him. And you see the governor stops him in his track. And Merle is like respecting him. He was like, Okay, governor. Oh, I'm he said, I'm sorry, governor. And that's how we know this guy is nothing to play with. But here's the thing. People think Merle is scared of the governor. Merle is being smart. Do you see how many people the governor got with him? Merle being smart because Merle don't really listen to nobody, not even in season one. That's the reason why him and T-Dog had that conflict because T-Dog told him stop shooting that gun because he was causing more walks to come. And Merle assisted not to. That's how we know Merle don't listen to nobody. Merle is his own man, but right now Merle is being smart. That's what I, that's why I'm calling it. And we see Milton. Now let me say this: Milton is the science guy, the guy that's working on the zombies. And Milton is like a a continuation of Doctor Jenner because we know what happened to Doctor Jenner. He had the equipment to find out what happened and how the zombies work, but eventually, um, the um the C the, the CDC lab. Blue, blow, blow, had blew up, so he didn't have time to really get resources on what happened with the zombies and how they work. But like I say, Milton is like a continuation of a Doctor Jenner, if you ask me. And basically, we see him with Michonne two pet walkers, and he tells the governor, as long, long as the walkers, well, he states to the governor, if the walkers ain't eating a long time, they lose the urge to want to eat people. And I found that really funny and so the governor basically asked him as skinny as they are do they ever starve and he was like yes they do starve but they starve a lot slower than we do and that's what brings me to this thing where I was asking myself about leaving Merle unsupervised because he tells Merle to go go back and talk to um Andrea and Michonne and Milton states to um to um the governor are you really going to leave him unsupervised talking to them girls and this right here raises my uh, suspects that there will that there will be conflict between Merle and the governor because th think about it the, I don't think the governor really trusts Merle and I know damn sure Merle don't 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 trust the governor Merle is used to being his own man he ain't, he ain't used to taking no orders point blank period now in the next scene we see them talking at the dinner table. Michonne, we see how Michonne wants her weapons back, et cetera, et cetera. But here's the thing. The governor is, uh, is he's, he's bullshit. He's a fucking hypocrite. And it's what I mean. He's talking about rebuilding the human race. When he was talking to Andrea and him, he want to rebuild the human race. He, won't, he don't want this time, he basically states that this time people ain't going to be eating people. I want to rebuild the human race. And I and I do whatever it takes to basically do that. Then we see him go like like he literally finds where the um army soldiers at. Or he goes he well he finds where the soldiers at. And he fucking kills them. How the fuck can you rebuild a race when you went when you went and wiped out the fucking um soldiers, the US soldiers? So that makes you a fucking hypocrite because you saying you want to rebuild the human race, but you kill fucking good people. Those people could have helped you in Woodbury. Your population is already not that fucking good. You got 74, you got 73 fucking people. And the 73 people is not a lot of fucking people. Yeah, in terms of, in terms of this, um, in terms of, yeah, in the zombie apocalypse, yeah, because like I say, um, there's more walkers than humans now. But why the fuck would you kill them? They couldn't help you. It's bad enough. It's bad enough. Like I say, 73 people. Those people had ammunition. They had trucks. They had army trucks. They couldn't help you. And you just go and kill them. Now, we see how he sets it up, basically telling them he found um uh the uh guy in the helicopter. That's what he was telling them. 
Yeah, yeah. He he found their friend Wells. He found them, and they believe him. So he can have like, oh, he did. Bam! He just he he just shoots the the soldier. And then we see Meryl, Tim, uh, Bowman. We see uh, Martinez just kill the rest of them. Now here's the thing. Meryl works with the governor. But but do he agree with but 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 do he agree with what the governor does? And I noticed this because I seen when the governor shoots down that soldier, like when he puts that gun up, he shoots down this soldier that was trying to run away. We see Bowman. Now Bowman is the black out the fro. We see go back and watch that scene. You will see Bowman. Bowman looks over at Merle, and you see Merle look back at Bowman. Now. I don't think they condemn with what he does, but they follow me orders because they don't have no choice. Either follow orders or I, or I believe he'll try to put them out of wood bearing. Or he might try to kill them because he do have uh, you know, a couple of men. But I don't think they um agree, I don't think they agree with what he do. Some some of his men do, but I don't think them two did. And also, let me mention this. Merle probably has some linguacy towards them army people because think about it. For some of you who don't know, Merle was in the military. That's right, people. So I don't think Merle actually agreed with killing them people because he used to serve the he used to serve the US. He was a fucking soldier. That's the reason why he was able to beat T Dog up like he did in season one, because Merle knew how to fight. He was in the army. So I don't think he could damn for I don't, I don't think he could deal with what the governor did to them people. Bullshit. Also, we see the we see the final scene where the governor comes back and he lies and say that oh when we found them they was already dead so we took their weapons their medicine supplies and basically telling everybody in Woodbury we need to be closer to each other. How the fuck can we y'all be closer when you going out there killing innocent people? That's how that's how the world that's how he got all those weapons. He got not and all the ammunition because he was killing innocent people for it. People who had that could have helped him out in Woodbury. You can't rebuild a human race when you're killing them. That's in fucking impossible. You being greedy. You got everything you need but you going around killing people for for their weapons and their food and their supplies. And we also see this flirtation going on with, between him and Andrea, and I think him and Andrea will mess around eventually. All I got to say is, Merle, watch your balls, man. Because I, all I got to say is, I got. To, I'm, I'm sorry. All I, all I don't think I have to say is, uh, Governor, watch your balls. Because if you in the car drive with Andrea, she will grab him. Or watch your nuts. Just saying. And we see them flirting, and Andrea asks him, "What's his name?" And basically, he say, uh, "He don't like to tell." But yet, when you were talking to her earlier, um, early in the episode, you state that people call me Governor. It's just a name they uh that stuck to me. Basically, just a nickname that stuck to me. It's like you didn't want to be called it, but just you just got you, you just got used to it. But you don't want to tell her your real name, Philip. Come on, Philip, man, you tripping, man. And then we see um we get to the final scene where we see him. We see this dark side of him. We see him. In the room, we see him look at his wife on the, in the pictures, his wife and his kid. So they died. I'm assuming that they died in the zombie apocalypse. Yeah, they had to. And we see this dark, twisted side of this guy. He's looking in a fish tank. He got fish, multiple fish tanks with zombies' heads cut out. Cut, cut out. Now this brings me back to what I was saying earlier about when he mentioned about when Meryl killed those three walkers, he was like, we have to get rid of these walkers because um, they're going to stink up the town. And basically, we don't want that smell that, that smell out of here. Yet, motherfucker, you saying you don't want to smell like him. You got to get rid of them. But you, you mean tell me you cutting off their heads, putting them in fish tanks? Man, what the fuck is going on with this guy? Seriously. And then, so we see the, um, the fish tanks. And we also see Michonne's. Michonne was two walkers heads in a fish tank. And we also see uh the uh other guy. Uh we see his head in a fish tank. So the governor decapitated his head out because we see a bandages up on his head. Um Lieutenant Wells. We see his head in a fish tank. So this guy right here is very dark. I don't know what to say about the governor, man. He's something to feel. Feel the fight the fucking dead. 
definitely fear the living people because that guy ain't nothing to play with. Nothing to fucking play with. And like I stated before, Michonne states she do not trust him. She don't trust him at all. And he knows this. And I think at one point, next episode, he really try to uh, recruit her because he do see her as a war potential. So, fight the fucking dead for the living because this guy right here is dark and twisted. Jesus, man. So, I hope you guys enjoyed my review. Um, so, rent, subscribe, rate, comment. Um, and let's talk about this down below in the comment section. Uh, peace.